Hello everybody, my name is Jennifer Maker. Today I am teaching you how to make awesome and fun socks with sayings on the bottom of them, like this, on the Great Maker Show and Tell. So have you ever seen those socks with sayings on the bottom of them? So like when you put your feet up after a long day, they say things like, if you can read this, bring me coffee, or bring me tacos. They are so cute and they're perfect for wearing around the house, especially this time of the year. I myself am a great lover of socks. The only problem with these socks is that it can be hard to find just the right style and color and saying, especially one that's not embarrassing. But when you can make your own sock sayings, personalize them however you want, suddenly all options become available. You can make socks about your favorite drinks, TV shows, movies, books, sport teams, whatever you want. And this is like whatever you want to do. When you put your feet up and relax, what do you do? Put that on a sock. So the types of socks that you're going to prefer to wear and buy are going to determine how you make your sock sayings. If you buy mostly cotton socks, you're going to want to use the iron-on vinyl. If you buy polyester socks, you're better off with the flexible iron-on vinyl like the Cricut Sport Flex. And if those polyester socks are also white or light colored like all of these, you can use Cricut Infusible Ink. And between these three materials, Infusible Ink is by far my favorite because it stretches right along with the sock and it is not coming off anytime soon because it actually dyes the sock fibers rather than kind of just slapping some vinyl on it. That said, if the sock is just meant to be worn once in a while, any of these materials are probably fine. It's really up to you. I have links to all of the socks that I've used here and the vinyl and the infusible ink in the video description if you would like to see what I used. Now, in addition to the socks and the material, you're going to need a way to cut your material, like a Cricut cutting machine. You're also going to need a way to press that cut material onto your sock, like a Cricut Easy Press. You'll also want some parchment paper, some cardstock, oh, and a lint roller is really useful too. Now, I've made 10 different sock designs that you can use freely, everything from cats, dogs, and tacos, to cozy sayings that will keep you warm during the winter. And you'll find them all over on my blog at jennifermaker.com. So let me show you where to find them, and then I will show you how to cut them out of your preferred material and get them onto your socks so they stay. To get started, you're gonna to wanna to get my sock saying designs. You can get them at jennifermaker.com. Look for the red bar at the top of the screen and hover over libraries and choose enter the library. The library is where I keep all of my free files and designs, there's lots of things here. The easiest way to find what you're looking for is to search the page. And I recommend you just search for sock and that will allow you to get what you want. And here it is right here. You click that and it downloads to your screen. And here is what the files look like after they've downloaded. What we're going to be paying attention to for this tutorial is the SVG file, but you're welcome to use the other files if you need them. Step two, prepare your sock design for cutting. First, measure your socks so you know where your sayings can go and what size you should make them. To do this, take a piece of white cardstock, fold it in three lengthwise, and insert it into the sock all the way to the toe. Make sure your sock's bottom is centered so you can see the heel and the heel is in the center. And then measure the space on the bottom of the sock with a ruler. Keep this paper in your sock for later. Don't take it out yet. We'll go to Cricut Design Space and pick a design. So here we are in Cricut Design Space on a new canvas. We're going to upload the SVG design files that you downloaded. So you're going to click on Upload and Upload Image and Browse and you're gonna locate the SVG file that you downloaded and click open. Here are the 10 designs for you to choose from. Just click save, then select it, and then click insert images. And they will now all appear on your canvas. Let's make the canvas a little smaller so we can see everything. Maybe not quite that small. So here are all 10 designs. You're going to want to pick the ones that you want. You probably don't want to make all 10. I mean, maybe you do, but you probably don't. So you'll want to click on ungroup. And then, you know, you have control over each individual one. And you can hide the ones that you don't want or delete them. 
I would like to make the mermaid one and I want to show you how to make that one because it's multiple layers and that's the hardest one here. So we're going to hide everything else. The easiest way I found to do that is to select everything that I don't want and group it and then click the eye icon next to the group name and they get hidden. They're still on my canvas if I want them later, but for now I don't see them. So here is our design. Now we want to make sure that it's the right size. If you're making this for a little girl sock, you might want it to be a little bit smaller than this, but it depends on the size of your sock, right? If it's for you, it's probably a good size right now. Let's make it about uh, two inches. And I'm just using the resize handle here to click and drag it into position. All right, well, this looks good to me. So let's click on make it. Cricut separates everything into these formats for our four colors. Now there's two important things I wanna do. The first one that you can't miss is to mirror. You need to mirror your design. So you toggle this button that says mirror here so that your writing is actually backwards on your screen and it's gonna cut out that way, but then that's going to allow you to put your design on the correct way so that we can actually read it. So whenever you do either iron on vinyl or infusible ink, you must mirror it. This is important. Now, the second thing I want to show you is optional, but I it's, I think it saves a lot of time. So right now, we have these individual mats with these colors. It would be a lot faster if we could just put all of these colors onto one mat and have it cut once, don't you think? I think so. So I am going to actually move all of these images over to that black mat. To do that, you just click the three dots in the upper left corner of each of the images on each mat and choose move to another mat and then select the mat you want it to go to and click confirm. Then you can click and drag it where you want it to go, just like that. So there's the hair. Let's move the mermaid body over to that black mat. We'll put the mermaid body in the corner, lower corner, and then we'll get the body and we'll move that over to the black mat too. And we'll put this one over on the side, but like in the middle. And everything is mirrored, right? So now I can put my different colors on the mat in these exact positions, and it will cut all four colors at once for me, and it will be a huge time saver. So let's click continue. And that's basically all you have to do other than making sure you put your pieces of infusible ink or vinyl in the correct spots. So you'll want to just look at your mat preview and you can hover over it over on the left and match up the locations on your mat preview to the locations on your mat itself when you're placing your materials. Step three, cut out your sock design. Using a green standard grip mat, place your chosen material on the cutting mat. If you're using iron on vinyl, it goes shiny side down. If you're using infusible ink, it goes printed side up. And be sure to select the proper cutting material in Cricut Design Space. Load your fine point blade into your Cricut machine and press the flashing button to begin the cut. Note that I had to send my infusible ink transfer sheets back through for a second cut in order for them to weed easier. To do this, just press the C button after your first cut finishes and be sure to press that button before you unload the mat. If you do it before you unload the mat, then it will cut on exactly the same lines. If however you unload the mat and then reload the mat, chances are very good that your second cut will not be in the exact same place. Step four, weed your cut design. Be sure to carefully weed your design by removing the excess material around it. If you're weeding iron on vinyl, it's helpful to use a weeding tool and be patient. If you're weeding infusible ink, it's recommended that you employ the cracking method. To do this, peel the cutting mat away from your cut design, which is what I always recommend anyway. Then slightly bend and roll the cut paper until you hear a little cracking sound, which happens as the cuts separate. Don't worry if your design lifts off the liner a little bit. After you crack your cut design, just take away the excess paper and you'll be left with just the, your design on your liner. Now to layer infusible ink, you want to actually remove the 
colored layers and put them all together onto one liner, just like I'm doing with the mermaid here. You can't press each individual layer separately after you've put them on because it will start to harm the already the ink that's already there. So you want to layer everything in advance and then press everything as a whole. And it's actually faster any, to do it that way anyways. So it all works out. Step five, position your sock on the pressing mat. With the folded piece of cardstock still in your sock, position the sock with the sock bottom up and the heel closest to you so that your design is readable when you can see a person's feet up. It should be in the same orientation as mine is here in this video. Step six, place your design on your sock and press. Now cover your sock with parchment paper and preheat it for 15 seconds. Be sure to also run a lint roller over the sock to remove any stray fuzz. Now place your sock saying design in the center of each of your socks. Cover again with the parchment paper and press again. If you're using infusible ink, press for 40 seconds at 385 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're using iron on vinyl, check the Cricut heat guide to see exactly the temperature and pressing time for your material and your vinyl. Step seven, let your personalized socks cool. Let your socks cool before trying to peel up the liner. Once cooled down from hot to warm, carefully pull the liner and enjoy your cozy new socks. So here's a sock with iron-on vinyl, and here's a sock with infusible ink. So you can see how they stretch differently. And I think the infusible ink works a lot better for socks, but you use what you have. I think in the end, they all look really cute, and these are gonna make wonderful gifts this year, and I think that you will enjoy them too. Now, if you make the iron-on vinyl socks, you're going to want to mostly just lounge about in them, or I think that the vinyl would eventually start to wear off with all of the walking about and abrasion from the floor in your feet, right? Now, when you go to wash them, I suggest that you turn them inside out, and this will help keep them looking good for as long as possible. If you make the infusible ink socks, on the other hand, you can do pretty much anything you want that you would normally do with socks, that is, and they should stay good for a really long time to come. If you have any questions about how to make your own personalized socks, let me know, I'm happy to help. Just leave a question below this video or come on over to my Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters where you're gonna find a whole lot of other crafters who are happy to help. And um, for those of you who don't have a Cricut cutting machine to cut your vinyl or infusible ink, I'm giving one away right now. You can enter for the chance to win your own Cricut over at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut giveaway. And I think that's it for today. Tomorrow, I'll be back to show you how to make window clings because when I asked yesterday whether I should make the socks or the window clings, window clings had almost as many requests as this tutorial, so we're making them tomorrow. And remember, I am always, always interested in what you want to make. If you can tell me what you want to make, I can show you how to make it. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft the life you love. 